Okay, I'm gonna tell y'all my personal experience with racism and my story about growing up with a, a, a racist biological father. Uh, I'm from Akron, Ohio. My family is from Akron, Ohio. I'm a Jackson, so the Jackson side of my family actually came from England in the 1700s sometime. They settled in Doylestown, Ohio. And then when Akron was uh, an up-and-coming city in the early 1900s, they, didn't, they then moved down to Akron. Uh, my great-grandparents were both born in Akron. My great-grandfather in 1914, my great-grandmother in 1917. When I was a little girl, uh, she used to tell me that the KKK would have these uh, parades, these rallies and these marches that would start downtown Akron on Main Street. And um, she said all the black people in Akron lived in the same part of town and this part of town was called the bungalow. So what the KKK would do is they would start downtown and they would march all through downtown, all through the city, all the way up into the bungalows where the black people lived to, to keep them in check, I guess, like, it's sick, it, you know, the, that was their mentality back then, it, even though it is sick. So growing up, um, my mother remarried when I was just young. She met my stepfather when I was just a year old, and he's Jewish. His family is from Israel and stuff like that. They came um, over to America to escape the Holocaust. So growing up, I had that kind of like upbringing around different nationalities um like my my stepfather is jewish his whole family is jewish uh he we actually have family that's from israel like you know our, my cousins are first generation born here um we've had experience with lebanese people people from india and you know we had people that we that were black that we considered family uh, from my stepfather, my Uncle Boss, my Auntie Rose, you know, their kids, my, my Uncle Patrick, my Aunt Wanda, and their kids, you know, so I grew up with my mom and my stepdad. They weren't racist. There wasn't an ounce of, of racism in their body. You know, they always told me that, you know, if you meet a man, doesn't matter what color he is, if he loves you and treats you right, then we don't care. So, anyway, back to my story, my biological father, you know, I would see him every other weekend and on Wednesdays, and he tried with everything in his body to make me racist. Um, being out in public with him, if he would see someone black, he had to make a racist comment. It, he had to. Like, I don't even want to repeat the things that he says or he, that he said because it's that disgusting. And I remember one time near Akron University where they have the McDonald's now on uh, East Exchange, in the corner of East Exchange and Sherman Street. Like we were coming out, we were on Sherman Street and these college students or what, I don't know what they were, but it was like probably about five or six black guys. They were walking behind his car and he got out like he was at the stop sign. He got out with a baseball bat and tried to beat all of these black guys with a baseball bat. And I'm just a young child in the car terrified, like, oh my God, you know. And because he tried to instill so much racism in me, it piqued my curiosity, like, what is wrong with black people? Why does he say these things about black people? Like, what could be so wrong with the black race that he has to say these things? Like, I couldn't understand because of what I knew from my dealings with black people. It's like, I love them. They're my family. So as I got older and I started maturing, you know, I was like, I think I like black guys, you know, like... I'm attracted to them, you know, and it, I really think it was my curiosity because of everything that my father tried to instill in me. He told me when I was a little girl that if I uh, were to ever date a black guy that he would kill me and him both, and he didn't care if he had to spend the rest of his life in prison. So I can honestly say, like, now I have mixed kids. When I got pregnant with my oldest son, I called him. I was 19 years old. I called him and I said, hey, I'm pregnant and the, the dad is black and he hung up on me and I didn't speak to him for nine years and we spoke a couple of times and then that was it, he was right back out of my life because he's not a changed man. So I guess the point to my story is, be careful in raising your children up trying to be racist because it might have the exact opposite effect like it did with me. Like everything that he tried to instill in me was the exact opposite. So show love to everybody and like if you don't understand something about someone of a particular race 
why don't you get to know someone of that race that you don't understand? Like get to know their culture, get to know that person as an individual and it might change your whole life around. Like your your views and your ideas and everything that you thought and you felt about that race might be completely wrong. Like I fell in love with the black race. The black race is beautiful, it's strong. Um, and I wouldn't change anything in the world for my decision to have mixed kids or you know, things like that. Like my family is very loving and very accepting of my children and I wouldn't change them for the world. So just be careful before you judge someone. I mean, it doesn't have to be a black person or a white person. It could be anybody. It could be a Muslim, an Asian, a black, a white. It doesn't matter. Like if you don't understand that person, reach out, gain an understanding, educate yourself. Like knowledge is power. Don't let the media or stereotypes and stuff like that affect your opinion of people. Like, it's just wrong. So if by me telling my story and just saying just, you know, what's on my heart and what's on my mind, if I could change, like, one person's thought process, just, you know, then I know that I've done a better thing. So y'all have a blessed day, and thanks for listening to my story.